secure your Bitcoin safely offline so that you are confident in your Bitcoin storage and security practices. Also, files, passwords, so if your cloud gets hacked, you're not giving up the keys to your life savings in the process. This houses a key to your money, and that is what we are accomplishing today. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. What will you need to know in order to successfully navigate this tutorial? Number one, where to obtain Bitcoin. On my website, btcsessions.ca, if you go into the learn section, there will be some listings in terms of things available in Canada or the US and some international recommendations, but best to kind of look and see what is good and local to you. Also a nice bonus to have is if you've ever tried Sparrow Wallet, because we're gonna be using it here with our cold card, but you don't have to have done it before in order to get through this tutorial. I will link to some other tutorials in the show notes down below. So if there's gaps in your knowledge, go check those out and that should fill you in. First, you got to figure out exactly what does a Bitcoin wallet do? A Bitcoin wallet basically has a key that allows you to unlock your funds on the global ledger. So it allows you to unlock certain money and move it wherever you see fit, as long as you have the keys to that particular money. With an app on your phone or an app on your computer, those keys are residing on your internet connected device. So that means the keys are only as secure as the device they are on. If your phone or your computer gets hacked and the keys are on those devices, somebody can take those keys and anything that they unlock, namely your funds. When you're using something like a cold card queue, these devices, they house your keys in a secure manner in which they are never shared directly with an internet connected device. They basically unlock only the funds that you specify and then send them where you've specified them to be sent. With that, let's dive into the setup of your cold card queue. Okay, so we're starting here with a fresh cold card queue. And to power it on, there's a power button just over on the top left hand side. We're just going to press that. And here we go. Okay, so it starts off by using this product. You are accepting our terms of sale and use. Read the full document at, and it gives you a URL you can go to. Press enter to accept the terms and continue. We'll just hit the enter button. By the way, your navigation is up and down here in the middle and side to side uh, in the middle as well, left to right. But we're going to hit enter here. All right, your new cold card should have arrived sealed in a bag with the above number. Please take a moment to confirm. This is just making sure that it's shipped from the same place. It hasn't been tampered with, so on and so forth. And my bag does indeed have the same number listed above. Okay, so now we're going to choose a pin code. That's the first thing that you typically do on a regular cold card mark four. There's gonna be two parts. There's a prefix and a suffix. In between these two pieces, you're gonna have something called your anti-phishing words. And when you put in the prefix or the beginning of your pin, you will be presented with these words. And if they are correct and they're the same ones every single time, you then put in the rest of your pin. If they are incorrect after you've already set up your pin and they show differently next time, what that denotes is either number one, you've incorrectly put in the beginning of your pin, or number two, somebody has played with your device. That's the breakdown. Let's set it up. Warning, there's absolutely no way to reset a pin. And it wants to make sure you read this down at the bottom. It will say press six to prove you read this message. I'm going to press six and off we go. So first part of the pin, I'm going to do a really basic one for this video. We're just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six for both parts of the pin. These are my anti phishing words listed below setup and sibling. I'll put in the second part of the pin, hit enter. And now it's asking me to confirm. So put in the first part of your pin again, and we get the same anti vision words. Now we put in the next part one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll hit enter. And it's saving. If you had incorrectly entered it, it would give you an error message. So we know that our pin is set up and this will now be the pin for the device. If we ever want to change it, we can do that after the fact, but it is now currently as we've set it. All right. So we are now bumped to our main screen here, but we don't yet have any keys residing on this device. We need to create some. We're going to choose new seed words and hit enter. The dice roll function serves to add additional randomness into your words, which you can do it if you like. We're not going to be doing that today. I'm going to do a 12 word phrase today for this example. 
Uh, this will now generate my seed phrase randomly through the software in the cold card queue. I am going to jot these down on a piece of paper and then do, as it states here, a series of questions to make sure that I've actually truly written them down. After writing them all down, I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask me systematically one by one, what is word number and insert number here? And it's going to do them randomly as well. So for instance, here it says word number eight is, and it gives me three options. I'm looking at my list here and I can see that word number eight was arm. And so in this list, I can see it's the second option. So I'm going to hit number two and we'll go all the way through until I've done all 12 words. After having answered all 12 words correctly, we'll see our welcome screen. Your cold card has now been configured for the best security practices with a bunch of different features currently disabled. So we will look on that depending on how we intend to use the cold card today. Now, the first thing we need to do with the cold card before we can use it plugged into the computer is we need to go all the way down to settings and hit enter. And then we need to go to hardware on slash off. And we saw this earlier, we're going to hit enter and we're going to enable the USB port at the top. So hit enter, go to default on, hit enter, and that's all good. So we're just going to hit the cancel button to get back to our main screen. Cancel, cancel. And there we are back to the main screen. Now at this point, we can plug our cold card into our computer. Any USB-C cable that is capable of data transfer will work just fine for your computer and utilize the cold card to have it viewable in Sparrow Wallet. So we've got Sparrow Wallet on our computer. We've got our cold card plugged in. What we're going to do is in Sparrow, we're going to go to File, New Wallet, and we're going to give it a name. I'm just going to, for simplicity's sake, call this one Q. So I'm going to hit the blue button for Create Wallet. We're going to hit the Connected Hardware Wallet button, and then we're going to hit the blue Scan button. And I can now say Import Key Store. That's going to grab data from the cold card. Just know that it got the necessary data from your cold card. And we can now hit the blue apply button in the bottom right. For this tutorial, I will bypass this and say no password. And that means we're basically set up. Abundant Minds is an Oregon-based husband and wife owned Bitcoin mining company making Bitcoin mining accessible to investors of all ages and experience levels. Their fully managed white glove service allows you to own all of your own equipment and earn steady Bitcoin denominated income without lifting a finger. Whether you're starting with 10,000 or 10 million, Abundant Minds is your one-stop shop. No overseas call center, no surprise upcharges. With one-on-one -on -one onboarding, consulting, and help navigating both Bitcoin and the Bitcoin mining space at every turn, you can rest easy while Bitcoin flows to you 24-7. Learn more at AbundantMinds.com. Looking for a simple and secure way to manage your Bitcoin on mobile? Aqua Wallet has you covered. It's user-friendly and puts you in full control of your Bitcoin with secure self-custody. Aqua also supports Lightning and Liquid Network, making fast, cheap Bitcoin payments and asset transfers easier than ever. Plus, it even supports stable coins, giving you ultimate flexibility. Built on open source code, Aqua is transparent, trustworthy, and perfect for beginner and pros alike. Ready to upgrade your Bitcoin experience? Click the link in the show notes or scan the QR code on the screen now to download Aqua Wallet today. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to receive a transaction to our cold card. And in Sparrow, as you may have guessed, we're going to go to the receive screen over on the left here. The receive screen is pretty simple. You don't need to know about all this junk kind of down in the bottom section, just the top section. So up top, you're going to see an address. And this is all the information anybody needs to send you Bitcoin. It can be copied by simply clicking on the copy button. It is also represented off to the side by a QR code. And then secondly, you have a label. And this is only kept internally in Sparrow for your own records. So the example I have here today, I have Bull Bitcoin. This is a Canadian Bitcoin exchange. I'm basically on my Buy Bitcoin screen here. I just scroll down. And it says, hey, how much are you spending? I have 200 Canadian dollars in my account right now. It gives me the option to withdraw through various means. I'm doing a regular Bitcoin transaction. And it says, hey, what's your uh, Bitcoin address? And so I'm going to paste in the address I just copied. It's a good idea to check the first few digits and the last few digits. 
If I jump back over to Sparrow, I can see that those are the same. So that all looks good to me. Now I'm gonna say where this came from. So I'm just gonna type bull and that's that's enough for me. Over here in bull Bitcoin, uh, that all looks good to me. I'm just gonna hit create by order. There's a confirm button. I'm gonna hit confirm. In Sparrow, you will have a pop-up notification that comes that says you have a new incoming transaction and this screen will recycle into a new address. And we did receive that transaction. You will then see reflected in the balance up here, which we do here. The reason for the discrepancy in the dollar amount is because this wallet is denominated in US dollars. So yes, the Canadian dollar is that bad. Uh, but nonetheless, it was 200 Canadian dollars or 145 American and it has the label bull. So we've now successfully received a transaction um, by our receive screen, but how do we send if we wanted to do so with our cold card? Well, we're going to do that next. So we're going to go over on the left to our send screen. And so it asks you a number of things. Where do you want to pay to? What label do you want to give it? What amount do you want to send? And then what fee are you going to attach to your transaction? And it's a simple slider back and forth. Now you can do different things here. If somebody were to message you an address, you can simply paste it into this field. However, you have perhaps a phone wallet or whatever, and you want to scan a QR code, you can do the same. So I've got a QR code on my phone ready. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit this little icon here, the camera icon. That's going to open up my webcam. So there you can see it. And I'm just going to move it close. And that should, yeah, that captured everything. I'm just going to type in the destination for my own records. Uh, I'm using something called Aqua Wallet in this instance. I have a video on it. But I'll include that in the show notes down below. And finally, an amount or the entire balance. There is a max button off to the side. It auto fills it. And from here on in, we're going to hit create transaction. This gives us a summary. Finalize. Now, the blue button again is to sign. And this will allow us to sign with our cold card. Okay, so we are logged in, ready to go. So in Sparrow, we're just gonna hit the blue button again, sign. There's an option to scan. So it'll scan for any connected hardware wallets. It sees the cold card and it's unlocked. So we're gonna hit the blue sign button. And this will now prompt us on the cold card to approve the transaction. So here on the cold card, it says, hey, is this okay to send? You're sending this much Bitcoin to the following address. Network fees are 1,767 sats. Does that look good to you? Press enter to approve and sign or cancel to abort. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna hit enter. I now have the signature, that little bar fills all the way across. What we need to do is hit that final blue button broadcast and that sends off your transaction to the entire Bitcoin network. So we'll do that right now. Roughly 10 minutes that will show as confirmed because we did do a high priority fee. So there we go. We've now sent off a transaction with our cold card. This is a very important part of using your cold card or any hardware device for that matter is what if you lose this device or what if you break it and you can no longer access it and you need to recover your funds? Well, that's where your seed phrase comes in, those 12 or 24 words that you wrote down at the beginning of this video. And I want you to follow along so that you have the peace of mind of knowing you can do this and you know it works. We're going to use, instead of new seed words, we're going to choose import existing. So we're going to go there. We're going to hit enter. It says, how many words do you have? Uh, 12, 18, 24, and it gives us some other options here, but we're gonna be doing our 12 word phrase that we used before, unless you did something different. And now you get to enter in the seed words as you had them before using the keypad. So we'll do that and continue on from there. All right, so once you've typed in your full phrase, if you've done it correctly, it should say valid words, press enter. So I'll do that now. All right, your cold card has been configured and it does basically wipe all my settings. And it says that, hey, you can change these under settings, hardware on and off. We are gonna go do that because we need access to this on the computer. You're gonna go through the same flow, file, new wallet. Um, just because this is the same computer, I'm gonna say Q1 this time, we'll call it. And we'll hit create wallet. We're gonna say connected hardware wallet. We're gonna scan for it. We're gonna hit import key store because it sees the cold card. 
Okay, so it pulls all this information here. I'm gonna hit apply. We'll say no password as we did before. And then we'll jump back up to transactions. And hey, look, a, we can see our history of transactions. We can see our balance. If there was a balance before, it would still be there. So that is your flow if you lost everything, or you could piecemeal it off if you just lost Sparrow, or if you just lost your cold card, you still have access. There's plenty to cover in the advanced stuff on the queue and being able to go through that entire setup without plugging it into a computer. And again, we'll be covering those in subsequent videos. If you want to keep up with that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit those notifications so that you can see everything else queue related. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This was your daily session. Securing your Bitcoin doesn't have to be complicated or invasive. With Nunchuck's Honey Badger plan, you get state-of-the-art multi-sig with built-in inheritance planning and no KYC required. Nunchuck is trusted by users to secure billions of dollars in Bitcoin. The Honey Badger plan offers 204 assisted multi-sig, guiding you step-by-step -step on mobile or desktop. It works seamlessly with hardware wallets like TapSigner, ColdCard, Jade, and plenty of others, so you're always in control. Plus, with non-KYC inheritance planning, you can ensure your Bitcoin goes to your loved ones. No private info needed. Take control of your Bitcoin today. Click the link in the show notes or scan the QR code on the screen to check out the Honey Badger plan.